Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today is part three of the 1994 Corvette front caliper upgrade from 12 inch to 13 inch calipers and the install of stainless steel brake lines at all four corners. I had a lot of problems filming this. What you're watching is my third attempt, so the project is done. I had a lot of problems, technical problems on my first shoot. My camera just repeatedly failed me. The second attempt, everything was in the car. I was going to reverse engineer everything and show you what to do. I failed there because I had poor camera angles and lighting that just made it intolerable. There's going to be footage from both attempts that I will probably edit into this. Um, a lot of it were audio difficulties on the first attempt. The second attempt was camera angles and lighting. The third attempt, what I'm going to do is show you the old components, how I broke them down, and in what order. The nice thing about this is you'll get to see the components basically in an exploded view. Everything is laid out and I will show you step by step and I will break everything down and explain what these components are. So the rear brake lines are already in. The front I haven't done anything with other than removed everything. With that said, everything is staged back up. I am going to show you exactly which bolts to remove, which wrenches to use, which order to do it in. All right, here is the front driver's side. Before we get into the breakdown, I'm gonna show you, this is everything is installed. Here's the stainless steel brake line. Here's the J55 heavy duty 13 inch caliper. These are my new rotors. Very disappointed. I ordered painted black caps. They call this a cap. It is not painted. I did not have time or want to delay my project by returning these and ordering the other rotors. These were special order so it I just ran out of time. This is fine. These, by the way, are AC Delco. In the video description, I will write down the products that I bought, where I got them, and how much they cost, the brake pads that I used, and the rotors that I'm using. My calipers I bought used off eBay. So what I cannot show you on the exploded view is this right here. Here's the first thing that I did was broke this joint. Underneath is a nut for the steel brake line that comes from the car. This nut requires a 12 millimeter brake line wrench and it is a special wrench. A regular 12 millimeter combo wrench will not work. You will roll this over and damage it. So here's the steel brake line that comes from the car. Here's the nut. Here's what would have been the original rubber brake line. And there's a clip right here. This clip does not come out until you break this free. You break this free, then you remove this clip. This clip, you can remove it however you want. I used a small screwdriver and a hammer and very gently tapped that out far enough to get leverage on it. Then I used pliers. Once this clip is out, this hose just easily removes from this bracket. There's a bracket right here. Everything else I can show you in the exploded view. I just could not show you this clip. Okay guys, here is everything that I removed from the car. These are my two rear rubber brake lines with banjo bolts. These are my two front calipers with the rubber brake lines. Here's the fitting that I was talking to you about. You use a 12 millimeter brake line wrench. You remove the nut from the bottom. You pull the clip out. You pull the hose out of the bracket. The next thing I did, 13 millimeter 
on, on these Corvettes, the banjo bolt for the hose is 13 millimeter. Now I have a small ratchet here. You, you're gonna probably need something bigger to break it free. It, it's a 13, 13 millimeter wrench. So step one was to break this free and remove it from the bracket. Step two is to remove the banjo bolt so that I can remove the brake line from the caliper. Now, step three requires a much larger socket and a braking bar, and you are going to remove the two large bolts that hold the caliper or the caliper bracket onto the front suspension. These bolts are torqued around 160 pound feet. They are gonna be on very tight. You are gonna need to break these free. It's not a bad idea to squirt some penetrating fluid on it the night before. So I would take the bottom out first and then I would take the top out. Now this comes out of the car. That's it guys, it's that simple. Okay, you do have to remove the rotor after that. That could sometimes be a challenge if it's rusted or seized on the hub, but a mallet, a rubber mallet, and some light tapping will more than likely get that off for you. Okay, I am going to show you a little bonus footage, and that is, since I have everything apart, I'm gonna show you how to take the brake pads out of the caliper. And this can be done with the caliper still mounted on the car. So, there's a pin, no threads, it's a pin with a, with a groove in it. This pin is slid into the caliper, and on the back side, you'll put the washer on, And then this E-clip, or should I say, in the car, this pin, you'll see the head of the pin on the outside of the caliper. On the back side is the E-clip and the washer. You'll very carefully remove the E-clip. I find a small screwdriver to work best, but be careful not to distort or bend that E-clip. And then you pull the washer off. Then you do whatever it takes to pull the pin out. And it will pull out, pull this out. Now what that allows the bracket to do, slide up like this. Now, now if this is mounted on the car, the caliper will slide up. It will come off, and then you can remove the brake pads. It's not a bad idea, you get a trick, you get a socket that fits inside of here, and you tap, very carefully tap them out, on the back, you can use a screwdriver, pry it in a couple spots. And that, guys, is how you take the brake pads out of calipers. To put it back in, it's just reverse. The side opposite the pin. Slide the pin back through. Assemble the washer. And then snap on the E-clip. Thanks for watching today's video. 